Good morning. Sometimes people ask me, what do you actually do as a product manager in CoreTech? As you will see in a moment, there is a great deal of innovation happening in VR at the foundational level. Our job is to translate what our, the technology that our researchers and engineers are developing into core building blocks that our products will use and our users hopefully will love. For me, there's nowhere more exciting to be doing this work than in VR. Here at Oculus, we have a bold vision about what VR can be. A platform that will give people sharing a virtual space the sense of being with each other, no matter where they are in the world. There is a lot to do. Srep highlighted some of the building blocks we are working on, and I'm going to give you more details in this. Hand tracking, visual immersion, and 3D reconstruction. Let's start with hands. Hands are vital in VR. They are the first thing you look at when you put on a headset. They are complex, they are expressive, and as you can see in the video, they are essential to communication, experience, and the sense of being there. But in VR, hands are difficult to get right. We see three levels of complexity. The first one is hand presence. You see your hands there, and you realize that you are about to live an experience in the first person. Second, you need to use them for simple interactions, like you would do in any interface, like a phone or a tablet. You touch, you tap, you scroll. Third, you need to use them for complex actions, like playing a music box. This requires precision and dexterity. And it usually involves two hands or a hand and an object interaction. We are set out to create technology for those complex interactions, because that's how you expect the world to work here and in VR. To do this, we are investing in new technology to train our models. It is based on AI and tracks hands real time in high fidelity. How does it work? We use a motion capture system, and we collect and label 3D marker positions from hands. The aim is to turn these marker positions into labeled hand poses that we will use to train our models. But labeling the markers is particularly hard for complex interactions. We have reformulated the 3D marker labeling challenge into a key point regression problem in 2D images. That way, we can solve it with a convolutional neural network. We call this deep marker labeling. Leveraging techniques from machine learning, our method is robust to occlusions and distractors. It's far more accurate than any method before for tracking a single hand, two hands, and hand object interactions. Let's talk now about visual immersion. To be compelling, your VR experience needs to be comfortable and have convincing visuals. Otherwise, you will never completely be immersed and, and believe it. We have been working on some of the visual limitations in VR, like improving visual comfort, your ability to interact with close objects, and increasing the field of view. First, we have to work in how your eyes focus in VR. Traditional headsets have a screen with a fixed focal plane. When you look at an object that is in the mid-range distance, your eye's focus works well because it matches the focal plane of the screen in the headset. But if you try to look at something that is not in that focal plane, like an object that is close to you, things become blurry. To work around this problem, the VR industry has been placing objects at a distance of about two meters. But this is limiting and is not realistic. Great VR has to work with objects that are close to you, too. If you are given a note, you should be able to read it. Second, we have to increase the field of view. Currently, the field of view of the headsets are about 100 degrees. But humans naturally see a much bigger field of view, about 210, 220 degrees. We gather a lot of information from our mid and far peripheral view especially important in social interactions, 
where you want to read the body language of people uh, around you, like if you are giving a speech and people are bored. Are you with me? <laughs> we have to improve in these areas. And we are. This is a fully functional prototype that we have developed to advance some of these technologies. Internally, we call it Half Dome. What you're seeing here is the integration of body focal technology. Think about it like the moving lenses in the autofocus function in cameras. To provide the same level of focus, we in VR move the screens depending on what you're looking at. This solution gives you visual comfort, clarity, and as you can see, up close sharpness. We have also optimized the mechanical design. Despite having the screens moving inside of the headset, you don't notice noise or vibrations. And for a compelling visual experience, it has a 140 degrees field of view. You can see the difference. <laughs> the added bonus, our continued innovation in lenses has allowed us to pack all this new technology and still keep the rift form factor and wait. Pretty exciting, huh? <laughs> Let's talk now about 3D reconstruction. VR can be magical. It can take you to space or to the deepest oceans. It can take you to front row at Fashion Week or to a pit in Formula One race, if that's really where you want to be. But for many of us, the most evocative, meaningful places are often more personal. Your home, your parents' home, your preferred vacation spot. You may want to bring those familiar places into VR yourself, capturing the world, reconstructing it in 3D, and sharing it with others. We are working in improving 3D reconstruction in two ways. First, by making it more accessible, so it's not only the result of expensive equipment or professional artistry. And second, by increasing the fidelity of what we capture and render. We saw yesterday a way to bring your environment into VR with a point cloud reconstruction. This demo was built using traditional computational photogrammetry. It can be captured using pictures or videos from any camera. And now, Thanks to our research engineers, we have created another way to do this. We take a burst of images, a regular panorama from any phone with a dual camera. From those, we take image pairs, one from each camera with the depth information. Our algorithm calculates the consistent depth and stitches them together. It generates a new panorama in 3D. We collect them. <laughs> cool. We collect them at a rate of one image per second, and we process, process them really fast in even less time than it took to capture. The result is geometry that is highly detailed, a 3D panorama offering a more immersive experience that you can enjoy in VR. On the other side of the research, we continue to push the limits of the reconstruction fidelity with high-end systems. What you're going to see now is not possible with a phone, but I want you to check out the next video. It is a house tour, and it's a side-by-side -side comparison of an original video with the 3D reconstructed of that home. Can you tell which one is real? It's not that easy, huh? <laughs> okay, the real one is on the left. And the reconstructed is on the right. And the clue was at the bottom left where you could have seen the shoe of the person recording the original video. <laughs> That's Julianne, by the way. 
Um, this is cool enough already, but let me tell you from a technical perspective what is really, really cool about this. Take another look at the mirrors. These are a big technical challenge to scan and reconstruct. Traditional systems reproduce, produce reconstruction mistakes because they don't understand how reflection works. They believe that the images in the mirror are indeed behind creating all sorts of weird scans. Our sensing system uses a special target, which can be seen in the mirror and localized. As the system rig moves around the scene, the target motion lets us estimate the, sh the shape and the location of the mirrors, so we can properly recreate the reflection. This may sound like a minor detail, but it is getting these countless details right that will make VR believable. We are getting there. Coupled with the work, with the developments on avatars that Srep mentioned, our advances are helping to bring the future into the present. We are proud of the progress so far, fascinated about the work we are doing, and excited about the possibilities to come. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of F8.